Hi there folks, welcome back to part two of my solar build for my tiny cabin. And in the last video, I constructed a ground mount out of four by four posts, but still needed to complete the framework needed to lay those solar panels on. So as usual, there's lots of work to do when you construct something like this. So let's get going. Even with treated lumber that's supposedly cured and everything, if you lay them down and uh, leave them in the wet, which I did with these, uh, unfortunately, um, sometimes if they're not placed properly and secured properly, they can warp. Um, I call this one Twisted Sister after the rock group in the 80s. We'll look for the straightest pieces and those will go as uh, the base to lay the solar panels on because you want those nice and level. The others are going to be cut up and will be just used as support braces all along my solar ground mount. You'll see what I mean once I do it. This one ended up with a big split in it somehow. That was really encouraging. There was a lot more straight ones than I thought and a lot less uh, twisted sister types than I thought. So since my 4x4s were not perfectly spaced, I needed to custom design the support pieces that would go along and secure the framework. I'm numbering every 4x4 and measuring the space between them so I can custom cut each piece then I'll mark on each piece where they go. Love these Irwin quick clamps. Best $40 I ever spent for four of them. So I went to a neighbor's place who has a nice solar array and I was like, well, how do you calculate the right angle for our area? Well, I looked it up and it's about 30 degrees super. So now Mr. Mathematically Challenged has to figure out how to lay those panels 30 degrees. No idea. And he just said, well, and he gave me all kinds of geometrical explanations. And I go, okay, that's not helping. But thanks to good old research, I found this thing. This is a Klein angle calculator. Love this thing. Push the button and the readout will tell me exactly the right degrees. So it's pretty simple. I'm just going to raise this up. Now we'll check this little guy and see what he says. I was comfortable with a reading anywhere between 30 and 31 degrees. Being just one degree off won't affect your solar input to any significant degree. So the cashier at Lowe's doubted I could put four 2x6 that are 10 feet long in my Toyota Corolla. I don't know where her faith was. I mean, really, come on. The little car thinks it's a pickup. That's why I call it a Toyota pickup. Still haven't got that uh, trunk lever fixed. I will at some point.
So I've cut this 2x6 so that it'll attach to the tall 4x4 post and join to the short one over there. And essentially, its job is to add structural support. There won't be any uh, solar panels resting on it. So if I make a mistake with the measurement a little bit, that's okay. And to attach those to the 4x4, I found these, thanks to Brian, over at Midlife Prices. Thank you, Brian. And I'll put a link to his channel in the description of this video below. And these are uh, structural wooden screws. And they're four inches, and they come with their own special uh, attachment that you can put into your drill, so you don't have to buy uh, any special uh, socket or anything. And they work really well, and boy, they go in nice with this driver that I have. So let's put them on. Oh, and of course, I'm a big fan of pre-drilling, so I'm going to pre-drill these first. So, here we go. I just realized I don't have any gloves on. Hmm, I'm going to get in trouble by my subscriber, Simon, over in there in the UK. He's going to reprimand me, so I better put on some gloves. So these will go in with the uh, impact driver. So we're all pre-drilled, so this should go pretty good. Beautiful. That's not going anywhere. So this piece, folks, is going to be where the panels rest. Oh, and by the way, um, something else crucial I'll show you. Placing this bottom 2x6 and the position of this is crucial to determine how far up on that 4x4 post this 2x6 will be screwed all the way down. So with the angle finder turned on, I'll just put that on here. Then I can adjust this up and down by loosening my uh, Irwin quick clamp here. 30.2, 30.1. Once I've calculated the angle properly, then I can go ahead and create this row of supportive 2x6s and knowing that the tilt is going to be the proper angle all the way down. Hope that makes sense. Oops, bit of an error. No problem. Fix it. Got to be room for the other corresponding 2x6 to fit in here. Well, the great thing about living in Arizona, even in mid-January, you can take a shower outside. So, I think it's time I cleaned up. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Hearts on the floor like flags before thee. That felt so nice, just like a spa. <laughs> 
super thankful for my garage tent shower. Even though this is treated lumber, I'm going to put a coat of white primer and then two coats of paint on top of that. I know already from being here as long as I have that the harsh Arizona sun and wind can destroy wood in record time. The small paint roller seems to really do the trick and the primer went on pretty fast. So we got it all primed and I think it looks pretty good. Good day's work. And uh, next comes the paint and uh, that'll be a nice brown and it won't be a shocking white like the primer. So as you can see here folks, uh, the four by fours at the top end are gonna be in the way of the solar panels when they lay flat. So we'll just use this trim board to mark where it should cut. So I'm still not um, practiced enough with the skill saw to make a nice cut like that all the way through. So the hand saw uh, does a good job for now. Super thankful for this DeWalt cordless circular saw from my subscriber Tracy. It sure makes work here so much easier. So originally I thought I'll just do one bird's mouth is what they're called cut on these two by sixes. I thought I'll make it at the bottom. Uh, then I got thinking about it and thought, well, I think maybe I should do two. One notch at the bottom, one notch up at the top. Well, I had some issues with that for sure. Um, I thought it'd be easy. It wasn't. I tried several times to get it right and failed, unfortunately. So that's a 20 some dollar piece of two by six that unfortunately is uh, going to be replaced. I absolutely love these Timberlock wood screws. They go in nice, they unscrew nice if you make a mistake. Just really, really nice screws to work with. So finally, time to put on the paint and I'll do two coats. And how I chose the color was pretty simple. I took a photo of the dirt with my phone and then went to Home Depot and did my best to match the color. And I think it turned out pretty nice. That clouds from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow. So finally I have two coats of paint applied, which I hope will protect this solar ground mount for many years. day to do this but I want to place all of these cross beams where the panels will be mounted to uh, in their place. Hopefully I won't blow away. I want to show you my secret weapon. The faux panel. So what this is guys is this is a fake solar panel that I made and it's got holes to indicate 
where the screws will go on the real panel and so I could just match these holes with these these two by sixes where the panels are going to lay on and now I'll have an idea it won't be super precise but I'm not worrying about that right now it's going to be fun because this thing is totally made out of cardboard and you guessed it <laughs> leftover two inch foam board that I've been using for a variety of things and so uh, this is going to be a challenge but by the end of it I should have an idea where the panels are going to go let's get started and wish me luck and hopefully I don't blow into New Mexico with this thing I thought the strong wind today would be a major nemesis. Nope. It turned out to be a friend literally pasting this fake panel into place and holding it there. I used a broken paint stir stick and my Irwin quick clamps to indicate where the last panel in the lineup ended and the next one should begin. I found since I'm a very visual person using the fake panel so much more helpful than running down with a measuring tape trying to figure things out that way. I'm now at the end of where all the panels need to fit and it looks like I've got a bit of space to spare. So thanks for watching this video folks and I'm looking forward to showing you part three where you guessed it I attempt to put those panels on my ground mount and uh, we'll see how all that goes. <laughs> so thank you very much and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe because I've got lots more videos coming up and you'll get to see uh, just the completion of this solar build. Also click the little notification bell that'll let you know when a new video is posted and I really appreciate you folks being here and uh, looking forward to those comments. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video.